All right guys, today we are gonna be testing random things from Amazon. So the first item we're gonna be testing is a Hamilton Beach, it says sandwich toasters. It was labeled on Amazon as a, as a, as a breakfast sandwich maker. So let's see what's inside here. Instructions. We actually might need these. I know I normally throw them to the side. Come on. Jeez, do they not want me to get in here? Really? I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. Come on, man. Well, now that we finally got it out. That's actually a little smaller than what I thought. Let's see how from what I saw on Amazon the impression that I got was that you're supposed to put a piece of bread down here put this down over your bread and then put your toppings and then put this down crack an egg in here it'll cook the egg you close it and then you move this lever over and then that lets the egg fall down. I probably should have done that with the lid open. <laughs> so you crack the egg in here and then move this lever over and then that will let the egg fall down onto your sandwich and then lift all this up and you have your sandwich. If this comes out, how is this supposed to cook the egg? I don't know. I'm not going to ask any more questions. <laughs> I'm just going to plug it up. This plate's getting hot. This is not getting hot at all. I'm assuming this is getting hot. So is this just supposed to like, that doesn't make any sense. So is it just supposed to work like an oven to cook the egg? And what's gonna keep, you see how loose this is? Well, if you crack an egg in here, what's gonna keep the egg from just like running all over the place? Let me read the instructions, something you ne almost never see me do. I think it's, uh, I think I saw somewhere it said something about letting it heat up for like five minutes or something. Yeah, it has a green light. So I'm just gonna let it sit until the green light comes on. Then we'll come back. So now we have a green light. Oh, this thing is really hot. So maybe it doesn't matter. I wanna know the difference. This plate, this plate right here is 446 degrees. This plate in the middle is 255 degrees. So. I'm not an egg expert, but I'm, I'm sure that's enough to cook an egg. So my next question is, I have a couple pieces of bread, but if the bread is supposed to go on the bottom, if I put this here, that's gonna burn. I can't just let that sit there, that'll burn. It's, it's, it's already trying to burn. So, and if I do let it sit there, that's just gonna like cut the bread. So maybe you're not supposed to put the bread there till after the egg is cooked, maybe? Use some cooking spray so the egg doesn't stick. Don't know if you're supposed to do that or not, but I don't want anything to stick. Let's go ahead and crack this bad boy. Oh. Oh, look at that. Is it leaking? Oh, I don't see it leaking out. All right, so let's close this thing. I don't know how long it's supposed to cook, but I'll just close it and let it cook. What's it looking like? It's cooking. So I was reading through the manual and the answer to my bread question seems to be that you're supposed to use an English muffin, which makes sense because that would be the perfect size to fit on the top and bottom. But I don't have any English muffins. All I have is bread, so. Let's check on this. Okay, I'm seeing the first negative of this thing. The sides, I don't know if you can see, but the sides look like they're starting to burn and the middle isn't even done at all. And there's no way to like flip it. Unless, well, I guess unless you just flip the whole thing upside down, but that wouldn't work. So, hmm. That kind of sucks. I wish there was a way for me to 
see the bottom so I can see if it's burning. Oh, this whole thing comes out. Let's just see if we can get a little, get a little peek. No? It doesn't look like it's burning. So let's close that thing back down. Ow, on top of that, it's so hot it almost burns. I guess we'll just let it sit a little more. I feel like this is taking forever. I'm getting tired of waiting. I'm just gonna go ahead and call that good. <laughs> I, want, I'm, I want to see how this transition is gonna happen from the, from, for the egg to fall onto the bread. So let's lift this up. Let's put this piece of bread under here. All right, let's move this. See if it works like it's supposed to. Will it just fall on? Ooh. I mean, that pretty much worked. Slid right out. <laughs> Fell right onto the bread. We'll just slide this over here. Let's check the egg. I mean, that's done. Let's give it a taste. See what it tastes like. Tastes pretty good. It just tastes like a regular egg sandwich. So, in conclusion, this thing, does it work? Yes. But to me, I feel like this is too much work. I feel like this is like an over-engineered way to make a breakfast sandwich. I feel like everything that I just did would have been way easier to just put a piece of bread in the toaster. Well, that's another thing. The, the bread isn't even toasted. I feel like it would be easier to just put the bread in the toaster, throw an egg in a skillet, cook it for like a minute, two minutes maybe, which would be a shorter time than this, throw it on two pieces of bread, and you're done. I feel like this is too much work. It does work. It's just, I don't know. There's just something, but I just don't like it. Let's move on. Next up, we have Smart Cups. Now, Smart Cups are supposed to be like a like a smart way to drink an energy drink. Now, you'll see what I mean. These are tropical fruit or tropical punch, naturally flavored. The reason they're supposed to be smart, you can see, I'll zoom in so you can see, but the, the drink itself is 3D printed onto the bottom of the cup. And it's a nine ounce cup. So all you're, you're, all you're supposed to have to do is just fill it with water and let it dissolve. And then you have an energy drink. So you can see there, you can see how it's you know, 3D printed onto the cup. So let's pour some water in here and see what happens. I'm really kind of curious to see what happens when you pour the water in. Now supposedly you shouldn't have to stir it or anything. It's supposed to just do its own thing. It looks like it is dissolving. It looks like it's like, just like some type of like Alka-Seltzer or something. So this obviously is an instant because this is, looks like it's gonna take a little while. So this has to be pretty close to being dissolved. Eh, it's still got a little bit left. Let's go ahead and test it. It smells good. That's not good at all. Uh, what flavor was it supposed to be? Tropical Punch. I don't know about Tropical Punch. Maybe like Tropical Garbage. It tastes like a very, very watered down fruit flavored plastic. Like if you were like licking a plastic bag that was fruit flavored, that's what it, that's what it tastes like. It kind of tastes like static. If you know what static tastes like. Next up, we have Mighty Mug. This mug claims that it does not spill. It says, grips, lifts, pro grips, lifts, protect. 
as featured in Inc., whatever that is, Wired, Kickstarter, Business Insider, Real Simple, Good Housekeeping, The New York Times. Mighty Mug grips to any smooth, flat, solid surface when you accidentally bump into it, but it magically lifts up naturally. Magically. We'll see how magic that is. Okay, that's all that's in there. So that's, that's the magic. What's that say? Dishwasher safe? What's this, a bunch of instructions? How to use it? How to use a mug? Let's fill this thing full of water. All right, it's full of water. Sit right there. All right. How does it, how does that happen? Really? What kind of witchcraft is this? How does that work? So it's like a suction cup that like, if you push down on it. Oh, it's a, like a little suction cup. I see. Cause I can pick up the whole table with it. That's still impressive. That's strong. How's, how does, how do they have a suction cup? So as long, so this piece right here, as long as this is put compressed, these two pieces are compressed, the suction cup is engaged. So you can push it down, you can rock the whole tape and it doesn't move. And then you can also pick everything up. All right, I'm just gonna hit it real hard. All right, well, if you hit it real hard, it falls. Let's fill it up again. I wanna see how far it can you can lean it. All right, let's make sure, make sure it's engaged. All right. I wanna see how far you can lean it on a table. Oh, the water's running everywhere. <laughs> so you, you can, you can hook it onto a table and lean it over enough to pour whatever it is out of it. Let's, let's put the cap on, so that way nothing spills out of it. Right, that's closed. Okay. Now let's lean it, see how far it'll lean. Is that gonna go completely sideways? Oh. So, you, you can almost set it completely sideways before it'll fall over. Let's go, let's go real slow, see if we can get it completely sideways. I stand corrected. The goal was to get completely sideways. Oh. It's not gonna get sideways. So that's really good. I am very impressed with that. Whatever, whoever designed that, that is a good design. Our next item is inside of this little box. It is a mini bag sealer. Oh, I thought there was instructions in there. Guess not. So it's supposed to be just like a miniature bag sealer, like a miniature, uh, miniature, I can't speak, a miniature vacuum sealer. Or not vacuum sealer, just a sealer. I don't know what I'm saying. It takes two AA batteries, just like that. Oh, come on. All right, so what I wanna see if it can seal, bags of chips. I feel like that's a pretty common thing that you would try to reseal. I have two different, ty two different types of bag. This is, this is just like a thick plastic and this one is like a typical foil bag. Uh, let's start with the sour cream and onion because pork rinds are kind of kind of gross. Might as well taste the product. All right, I'm actually there's plenty of room to try to reseal. One side of this is a cutter. Let's go ahead and use that. If it'll even fit, maybe. Let's see, 
Oh, I think it's working. Oh, look at that. So the cutter side works good. Now let's see if we can seal this up. It didn't come with instructions, so it's going to kind of wing it, I guess. I don't feel like this is working. Okay, so it only, wor it only started working halfway through. Go the other way. Maybe it's working now. No, air still leaked out. Uh, I mean, it kind of works. Let's get a fresh start. I just gotta hold it longer. There's not really a good way to tell when it's working. Oh, that might be working. Oh, come on. Oh, me being an idiot, I didn't line it up right. I feel like the middle part is going to be a weak spot. Oh, I feel like that worked. Oh yeah, that's good. That's a nice... Yeah, that's that ripped with the uh, bag ripped before the seal ripped. So that's good. So as long as you can... As long as you can, like, have the right speed and you kind of know what you're doing, it will work on a on a foil bag. So let's try it on a clear plastic bag. Pork rinds are gross, if you ask me. Why would you eat those? That was disgusting. I'm just gonna peel this sticker off so it doesn't interfere with our bag of sealing. Get the shot. Now that I feel like I know what I'm doing. Oh, I think that's working pretty good. Oh, I feel like that worked really good. Oh, yeah. Check that. It still didn't open. Oh, yeah. That's... It works way better with the thick plastic bags than it does the foil bags. That one, that was really good. I want to see if it'll, if it'll work with just a regular Ziploc bag. All right, so the bag's open. Let's see if we can seal it. Uh, no. You can see that it just, it just melts the bag. Well, actually, it kind of rips the bag apart, but it is sealed, the top of it at least. Yeah, that's it. it is sealed. So if you were to just seal it above or below wherever you wanted to open it, you could do it. In a pinch, if you, you know, just had something you just had to seal up and this is all you had, it worked just fine. So, I'd give that like a seven out of 10. And our next product is the Zippo Typhoon Match Kit. These are like weatherproof uh, like survival matches or something. Got a container there, nothing else in there, or there. Oh wow, these are big matches. So if you were gonna buy these for like a, like a survival kit or something. Obviously you would leave these in the plastic inside of here so it's kind of like double waterproofing. What is there, like instructions? Oh, there's an extra, two extra uh, 
striker surfaces. Yeah, here's a striker. Let's strike one. Let's see what it's like. Broke the stick, so not off to a very good start. Hey, really? There we go. Jeez, I felt like that took way too long. That's a pretty quick burning match, and I don't have a stick to hold on to, so that's <laughs> this is gonna, this is gonna get bad. Okay, I gotta get this outside. Let's do this. I have a jar of water here. Let's light one, drop it in the jar of water, see what happens. We'll see if this one lights a little bit easier. Oh, there we go. It is lit. Oh, look at that. It just completely burns underwater. Huh. Look at that. So we know that the matches will, once they're lit, burn underwater, but if they get wet, will they still strike? Let's figure that out. Hold it under there. I'll hold it under here for uh, 30 seconds or so. All right, so now it's wet. I'm not even gonna dry it off. I'm just gonna leave some of the water on there. Let's see what happens. Sparking. Oh, the stick broke again. Hmm. So I guess that's why it's important to keep them dry, because they will they will burn underwater. But if they get wet, you're done for. So let's try something else. I just want, I'm sure this will still burn with the torch. I just want to see. Yeah, of course. All right, so these things work, and they work pretty well. As long as they're dry, there's not really a whole lot that's gonna put them out. All right, so our last item, this one, <laughs> this one's really stupid, so this is gonna be a really short one. This is the Atomic Beam Glove. Let me show you how stupid this is. This is supposed to be a glove that has lights in the fingers so that way you can see what you're picking up or see what you're doing. Because I guess you can't hold a flashlight in this hand, you can't turn on the lights, you can't wear a headlamp. So your best option is to wear a glove that has lights. You're supposed to <laughs> put it on like this, wrap this around your wrist, and then turn it on. Then it has this big battery pack right here in the hand. And you're supposed to turn it on, then you have two lights on your fingers. So that way you can, like, if you're gonna pick something up, like, let's see here, pick up this bottle cap. Oh, now I can see it, so I can pick it up. Like, what is that? Like, what is this? Are you trying to be like E.T. or something? This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. It was so dumb I, I, that I had to buy it for this video. So, <laughs> that's it. That's all the products I have for you guys today. So, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.